Hey, I think Robert almost comes along, comes with a deep psychosis. Well, 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 what do we have here? Yes, we have a Vice article talking about cults. And yes, there are women-led cults. There are women cult leaders. It's probably the best way of saying it. But yes, basically they talk about Teal Swan, a YouTuber. This is me just reading it off there. A YouTuber who proves selling salvation to desperate people is an equal opportunity racket. Were you living under a rock? Anyone who didn't know this? Blimey. The number of female televangelists. The number of female New Age gurus out there not dissimilar to Teal Swan. How many so-called prophets, psychics, scammers are like that? There was a psychic who was put away a number of years ago because she scammed large amounts of money off several people, including a person who was an author. There have been numerous cases like this over the years. It's nothing mysterious or magical to imagine and to know that factually speaking, there have been, there are, and there have always been to some degree, female cult leaders. Now they do mention the problem. A great many people think a woman cannot be a cult leader. Ridiculous in this day and age that such gender bias should be in place. Well, thankfully, they respond to this. It's a strange notion, isn't it? For people to ponder that you cannot actually have a female cult leader. When, of course, obviously, evidently, you can. Oh, I do like this. Turns out it's not exclusively dudes who do this. Yeah, you're right. It's not exclusively dudes. For every, let's say for every other Christian cult leader, end times prophet, there's usually a woman out there who's doing the same racket. Maybe it's slightly less than that. Maybe it's not, you know, one for every two. So one female for every two male who are claiming to be a Christian prophet. But you will find those who are out there and are certainly not a forgotten or forgettable minority. When it comes down to New Age, the, well, the die is cast in a different way. Female cult leaders, female psychics, mediums, channelers, people who claim to talk on behalf of the aliens or the gods or whatever the case may be, they're abundant. The blade cuts in the opposite direction, it seems. Where, in fact, I would say the majority are in fact female, as opposed to in Christianity, where the majority of cult leaders tend to be male. They also mention about her retreat, Teal Swan's retreat center in Costa Rica, and uh, yeah, it's worth mentioning that too, how much people spend on that. It could be a lot worse. When it comes down to some of the major operators in self-help, for example, some of their retreats are far more expensive, and they're typically tailored towards people with money to burn. And of course, Teal Swan will get a certain number of those sorts of people who will, in fact, spend large amounts of money going to the retreat, which is supposedly meant to make you a better person. I think many of these people are probably okay, to be honest. No need to feel guilt for just being human. No need to feel like you have to change yourself all that much. And I think many people get hooked on that idea that through some kind of magical enlightenment process, they can change how they think, how they feel, how they live their life. And in that regard, I can understand why it's so appealing, because it's a, it's a wishful, it's a magical idea where they think they can change their life fundamentally just by tweaking a few things. And if that works for you, good for you, but I don't think you're really going to change that much. Perhaps initially, perhaps through some small effort, you'll feel much better about yourself and your life, your situation, whatever it may be. But in many ways, that's the placebo at work and a psychosomatic response to the stimuli at the retreat. When it comes down to everyday life, six months later, I need a top up. It might not even be six months, but it's liable to be a few months down the road. You're thinking, I need to go to another retreat. I need to go to another workshop. I need to go and do something to top up my energy, which of course is reflective of self-esteem issues, but that is a whole other video. It's also good that they mention at the bottom of the article, they link there with the National Suicide Prevention Line in the US. There are similar lines, of course they mention the Canadian one as well, and there are similar ones all over the world in the developed world, but there's the uh, Samaritans here in the UK, which are quite good 
Um, despite being called the Samaritans, by the way, the Samaritans UK are not actually a religious organisation. Um, but yes, I would say it's important to point out that when it comes down to cult beliefs, they don't need to be Charles Manson for them to be bad. In other words, they do not need to be the worst case scenario in order for them to be something that, we, we, well, which really should be discussed and refuted. Should be something that we look into and go, okay, there are some harmful characteristics in the case of Teal Swan. It is the discussion of suicide, and her idea is that you should meditate upon it. Ponder your own suicide. Experience it in meditation through visualization. That you should consider it. And hey, if you do it, what's the worst case scenario? You simply reincarnate. So yeah, that isn't on the same level as a murderous cult, but it is a belief that allows the idea of suicide to be perpetuated and has probably destroyed at least several lives or encouraged people to fall into suicidal thoughts and deep depression. So in that respect, it isn't the most dangerous kind of belief you'll find, but it is certainly a belief with flaws. And believe me when I tell you, that is the, the tip of the iceberg when it comes down to the practices and ideas of Teal Swan. I think Robert almost comes along, comes with a deep psychosis.